This week's episode of the Business Life and Coffee podcast is brought to you by Phone.com. Now, if you're an early stage entrepreneur, I know that you've run into this following predicament at least 20 times. You want to connect with a customer. You want to share how they can get in contact with you, but you don't want them to have your cell phone number. Because after all, who has a house phone number and why would you give that for business? And then secondly, you don't have an office number. So the phone number that you have is your cell phone. Well, phone.com has thought of you and thinks of you constantly, and they want to make sure that you have a better phone experience for your customers. Right now, if you check out bit.ly slash phone BLC, you'll get 20% off of base service for three months. And what does base service include? Base service includes one local or toll-free number, unlimited extensions, so that means you can have people connect to sales, connect to you directly, connect to the operations department, whatever it is that you want, you can have them connect. And then you get 50 plus included phone features, which you can check out on the site, as well as 300 included minutes. So that means you can close that deal and you can have it on your phone.com account. Communicate better with phone.com and save money with the Business Life and Coffee Show. Check out bit.ly slash phone BLC to save 20% off of base services for three months. All right, let's get right into the show. Thanks again for tuning into this episode of the Business Life and Coffee Show. Have a really power packed episode with a special guest. And we're going to be talking all about the all in challenge and some of the cool perks that people were able to submit money for to raise funds for COVID-19. We're going to be talking about how one famous fast food chain is actually donating their meals to first responders that show up in uniform or wear ID. And for Coffee Shop Q&A, we are going to be talking about some of the hot takes that I have about what returning to work will look like for most Americans. As always, this episode is brought to you by Jumpstart HR. Jumpstart is a HR outsourcing company for small businesses and startups all across the country. And as you heard at the beginning of the episode, phone.com. That's right. If you check out our promo link in the show notes, you will be able to save 20% on your basic coverage. So if you are looking for a phone service and you're tired of giving your cell phone out to prospective companies and people that you want to do business with, get a phone, get a phone number that you can use. And uh, I would recommend phone.com for doing that. Quick check in. How are you doing? What's the latest uh, in your world? Are you a part of a state that has recently opened up or loosened their restrictions? I know at the time of the recording, Georgia is open. I think that South Carolina may be as well. Um, I don't know. But a lot of states are looking at their economies and saying, hey, we really need to get people back to work. And so I want to hear from you. Are you in a state that's opening up again? Are you in a city that said, hey, I don't care what my state's doing. We are going to open up. Let me let me know. I'm in Maryland and we haven't loosened restrictions yet, but the governor says that it's coming. So I can't wait to get out of town. My wife's birthday is in May, so I've got to plan something special for her. And I don't want it to just be us sitting around the house eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And uh, I need some creative tips, too. So if you have some creative tips to help celebrate a birthday, let me know. Reach out to me on social media at Joey V Price HR on Instagram or Joey V Price on Twitter. So we want to hop into this first segment of Mama, I Made It. And Mama, I Made It is, of course, leaders who are making a difference. And of course, in this COVID-19 season, I wanted to share the all-in challenge. Now, if you're listening to this, you can no longer participate. 
it is over effective May 1, 2020. But take a look at some of the cool challenges that actually were uh, offered and some of the things that you could have won. There are 30 challenges altogether. And the first one, be in Kevin Hart's next movie. How cool would that be to have a cameo and launch your career, get your IMDb credits for uh, the next Kevin Hart movie? And another one, Mark Cuban uh, is offering a one day contract to play with the Mavs. Now, I don't know if there are stipulations on that, if there are, if it's for men only, if little kids can be a part, you know, uh, women, you know, be the first female basketball player in the NBA. That would be pretty cool. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that turns out. The MLB has stepped up and said that they'd allow you to throw out the first pitch at the next World Series. And let's see, uh, another cool one here. Let's see, DJ Lessons and VIP Night Out with DJ Pauly D. Uh, the Ultimate Beauty and Wellness Weekend with Bobby Brown. But there is so many things here that you can bid. Some of these you bid like 10 bucks to enter for a chance to win. And then some of these, you have to actually be the highest bidder. Now, let me do a quick search here because of course I'm competitive and I wanna see which opportunity do I not have the best shot at winning. Uh, let's see, there's one bid here for $38,000 where you can do a private wine tasting dinner with Charles Woodson and a two year wine supply. So that's for 38,000. Uh, wow, $65,000 for landing a speaking role on the next season of This Is Us. How cool would that be? How cool would that be to have a speaking role in one of the hottest shows on television? And then, of course, all right, this one takes the cake. This one has the most money currently for their current bid. Wine and dine at Villa Joe Montana. So for $75,000, this person is going to get an opportunity to hang out with a Hall of Fame quarterback, Maybe see a Super Bowl trophy, maybe see a Super Bowl ring. Who knows? I don't know. But you can wine, be wine to dine at Joe Montana's house. So those are the, some of the all in challenges there. And I think it's pretty cool that celebrities have come together to offer this sort of thing because, hey, why not use your powers for good? Whether you're an athlete, whether you're an entertainer, whether you're like Mark Cuban and you just have a billion dollars, multi-billion dollar franchises and organizations. Why not use some of that to help inspire hope? Why not use some of that to help uh, find a cure? Or actually the all in challenge is um, providing food to those in need, kids, elderly and frontline heroes. So why not use your platform and your greatness to help bring food to others? I think that's a really good uh, way to leverage your expertise. Now, I don't know if I had a challenge, <laughs> if it was sell out, but I think what I would have done if I participated in the all in challenge, of course, I wasn't invited. I wasn't one of those super stellar, uh, folks at the time, but, um, I probably would maybe have someone be a guest on my show you know, have the ability to come on the podcast and maybe even talk about why you are interested in being on the show and what raising the money would do for you and interview somebody and really get their story of why they chose to participate in the All In Challenge. And maybe, you know, I might say, well, you don't want me to cook for you. Uh, I, I can't select wine to save my life. So it'd probably have to just be that. Um, just come on the show, be a podcast guest, have fun, get your name in lights, blast it out to the, to the folks who are listening on radio and podcast. And that would be my challenge. What would be your all in challenge? If you were to step up to the plate and give an opportunity and experience or a tangible thing to people, what would be your all in challenge and what would you value it at? Let me know at uh, Joey V Price HR on Instagram and Joey V Price on Twitter. I'd love to hear about that. Now, on the other side of this break, we're going to transition into our special guest who is going to talk about a very popular fast food chain and what they are doing to bring a little joy and a thank you and share some happiness to frontline workers 
all across the country. You don't want to miss it after this break. Jumpstart HR is changing the face of the HR industry with their outsourcing, project consulting, and phone support. Enabling startups and small businesses to outsource their HR needs from anywhere in the U.S., from new business and legal compliance to employee performance management and outplacement services. Within the business community, Jumpstart HR is a trusted and reliable service. In fact, companies like Forbes, HR.com, and Inc. Magazine have all featured Jumpstart HR for their easy-to-use, hourly, monthly, and on-call support that is tailored specifically to each client's needs. This saves clients like you a lot of time and money. To learn more, schedule your free HR evaluation today at jumpstart-hr.com slash contact. All right. Hello. Thank you. And welcome to another edition of While You Were Working. And this is where we highlight leaders, heroes, and news that you need to know, but maybe you are too busy working. So this week, we're speaking with Tanya Lawrence, an owner operator of several McDonald's restaurants about how McDonald's restaurants across the country are thanking frontline heroes. Hey, Tanya, thanks for coming to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Tell us a little bit about what McDonald's is doing to thank first responders and healthcare workers. So McDonald's, uh, McDonald's Corporation and the franchisees, we got together uh, because we really wanted to uh, to do something um, to reward and to thank uh, those who are diligently uh, working to keep our community safe um, and healthy. So we came up with this thank you meal uh, program and it's for first responders and healthcare workers and we're providing free meals for them uh, from April 22nd through May 5th. So they can come bring breakfast, lunch, dinner, uh, whatever time of day works for them. So could you tell us a little bit about why McDonald's chose to do this and how did it come to you? I know you're a franchise owner in the Chicagoland area, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'm in Chicago. Uh, well, you know, we started, we've always been uh, very involved in our communities. It's just part of our, of our framework. Um, but what we were seeing is that a lot of owners were, we were all doing things separately in our communities. And we thought, you know, with the, with the power of Brand McDonald's and the power of the system, we thought that, you know, it would be great if, if we could partner with the company um, and, you know, be able to, to give thank you meals consistently across the country, you know, just on a national basis to, to all these great people and heroes, you know, that are, that are really supporting us during these difficult times. And what has the response been to the offer thus far? Um, we're really excited. It's really been tremendous. Um, through this morning, I know that we have served um, over 5 million meals. So we really are trying to get the word out there so that those that don't know about it um, can, can come take advantage of the program, you know, through Tuesday, May 5th. All right. Well, and how can viewers who are first responders and healthcare workers participate in this program and get their own thank you meals? Uh, well, we're making it really easy. You just need to show up at the restaurant, um, either in the drive-through or for a takeout order, either come in uniform or if you could bring an ID or a badge. Um, and then our crew and our managers will be more than glad to to provide you with your free thank you meal. Awesome. Awesome. And Tanya, before I go, uh, do you have any uh, f firsthand stories? Were you there to see a, a first responder receive a meal? Is, is there any moment that stood out to you that you'd love to share with the audience? Uh, we started doing this before the program came about. Um, but, you know, my husband is a, is a lieutenant for the Chicago Fire Department. And, um, you know, just being able to, to share this with him and then tell him, hey, tell your colleagues about it. Um, it's really, it's really been nice because uh, people are really gracious and very grateful uh, for the work that our team, that our crew and our managers are doing. So uh, they're very kind when they come to the drive through and they're just happy to see a smiling face. And we're happy to be able to provide them with, you know, with a free hot meal that they so deserve. That is awesome. And please send my best regards to your husband who is out there on the front lines protecting our people. Tanya, thanks for having me or for being on the show today. And I hope you go on to serve many more thank you meals. And uh, thank you, McDonald's, for making this segment possible. How can people reach you? Or do you want people to just go to go to McDonald's, go to your local drive through? Yeah, go, uh, if you need any details, you can go to McDonald's.com. But all you need to do is just, you know, go through one of our drive throughs or come in for carry out. We really appreciate you taking the time to share our message. 
Thanks, Tanya. My pleasure. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Be well. Tanya, that was such a great interview. And I appreciate all that McDonald's is doing to bring happiness and cheer to frontline workers all across the country. We're going to transition into the coffee shop Q&A segment, which is the virtual mentorship and interview experience here on the Business Life and Coffee Show. And this episode, I want to double down a little bit more on some of my thoughts of what life will look like when we return to work, when we actually go to offices for the very first time, and what are some of the things that we'll need to be considering. Now, part of this is wanting to help prepare you for what is to come. But also, it's, uh, you know, everybody wants to have that hot take where you look back a year, six months, and maybe even two to five years and say, hey, they said it first. And so this is my hot take segment of what I think life is going to look like in a few different areas. So the first thing I want to talk about when states open back up and what it'll look like to return to work and return to malls and things like that are from a structural perspective, who are some of the people that we're going to be taking cues from in order to shape what life looks like moving forward. So it's not just gonna be your boss or if you're the CEO of a company or an entrepreneur, you're not gonna be the only one who calls the shots. Uh, I think that we're going to really be paying attention to our uh, medical community and what their expectations are for best practices for social distancing now that we are being more physically close. Uh, We're removing the barriers of physical distance and becoming closer. So I'm thinking that you know, we'll still need that six feet of separation. People will, uh, if, if they're not your family, they're going to need to be walking around these bubbles of, of six feet of space. Uh, I think that that's going to mean, you know, at checkout lines, the lines are going to be longer and they're going to wrap around the building because you're going to go from where previously you could have maybe five or 10 people in a small line, but now you're going to have five to 10 people times six feet. So you're going to have a 60 foot line, a 30 foot line of, of people. And that might wrap around a store that might go outside of a store. Stores may say, you know, I don't want the hassle. So no more than five people at a time in our store, 10 people at a time in our store max. We're going to see a lot of Uh, rules with regard to the medical community about how to safely deal with people that are in your orbit, so to speak. Uh, What is that going to look like for restaurants and bars? Restaurants and bars, I really think that there's going to be an empty chair next to everybody. If you go up to the bar, you're going to sit in your spot, but there's going to be an empty seat next to you because that the days of being in close proximity is going to be over. Now, I I should caveat that with saying, you know, I think that if you have a mask on or if you have some kind of face shield or whatever the innovative community comes up with to, to reduce the spread of COVID, I think you'll be able to keep people all together and, and have more gathering, but there still needs to be those barriers in place. Even as I'm talking now, you know, I'm seeing like little spit bubbles fall out, fly out here and there. It's probably TMI. But, you know, if I was close to somebody and if I was COVID positive, boom, you just got (laughs) you just got a bubble. So we're going to think about that. Uh, I think that outdoor dining is going to be safer than indoor dining simply because you're going to have more opportunity for air to circulate away from people as opposed to being on top of people. Uh, that very nature of just having an opportunity to, you know, speak into the open atmosphere as opposed to in a small crowded booth or a small crowded table, uh, that's going to make for safer, uh, safer dining. What else? Uh, churches, religious institutions. I really do believe that churches are going to need to take out those pews and replace them with seats replace them with chairs 
And that might look like one seat and then a six foot bubble around those seats. Or maybe churches are going to look strange for a while and say, you know, we'd rather have our people together, but everyone is going to have a mask when they come in. I think that that is going to be the only way for churches and religious institutions that gather. Uh, that's going to be the only way to get close is if everybody either comes with their own mask or they are given one at the door. In addition to that, the way that we move in and out of lobbies in public settings, especially at churches where we like to gather and talk to people and celebrate, you know, the, the service that we had, I think that's going to look different. I think that, especially for the summer, um, that lobby experience is going to be pushed outside into the parking lots, into the, uh, open spaces because even uh, the governor of Maryland um, is saying that outdoor is more is safer than indoor. So churches, you are going to experience a congregating outside and, as opposed to inside the lobby or inside classrooms and things of that nature. Maybe Sunday school will be outside. Who knows? Weather permitting and things of that nature, but it's going to be safer outside than inside. Next, let's get into corporate buildings and co-working spaces. My favorite place to hang out. I think that co-working spaces are not dead. Uh, there will be no industry that is fundamentally dead from COVID. I think that most industries are going to adapt and respond and innovate. And so the co-working space you may have the open air location. However, you will need to have six feet of distance. So that may be reevaluating the tables and chairs that you have and making sure that they're at least six feet wide and at least um, three feet deep so that you can stack, you know, a three foot deep desk up against another three foot deep desk so that you manage to have this whole social distancing thing nailed. Uh, I think that conference rooms are going to be treated differently. And the reason why I say this is because, of course, there is going to be the medical community who says that things are going to have to change. But there's also like fire marshals and people who are responsible for building code. There are going to be new guidelines that dictate how close we can gather, how close we can sit, what our conference rooms need to look like, what public spaces need to look like. There's gonna be all this change that comes with being in the corporate setting. I also think that we're going to have employees go in shifts. So you may have a group of employees go into the office one week at a time, two weeks at a time, and then you rotate out the other group that goes into the office. That is going to be a way to combat the need for more physical space without having the ability to knock down a wall or build more space or get more footprint in a building because that's going to be costly too. So I think businesses are going to need to really evaluate the shift model, the rotation model, and not have everyone rush back to work so soon. I think Zoom conferences are just going to be a preferred way of life now, uh, or if not preferred, at least uh, a mandatory requirement from a safety perspective, the uh, video conferencing. And I think that there will be less people in office, at least for the next six months to a year, maybe even 18 months. I don't foresee conferences, sporting events, concerts, festivals. They will not look remotely close to what they did before, at least for the next 18 months. And so that is going to require businesses and conference planners to adapt. I think we're going to see more virtual summits, more virtual experiences, uh, a higher degree of interactivity, maybe even augmented reality or virtual reality. You know, you put on a headset and you feel like you're there. Uh, you put on a headset and you hear the speaker, you see the speaker. Um, I'd be excited to see what virtual reality looks like in the age of coronavirus. I know even now that, um, that there's actually 
like a VR program for NCAA sports, uh, NCAA basketball, where you can put the headset on and it's like your courtside. So I would expect to see more virtual reality in the time where we can't all physically be together, but we want to share experiences. And that's going to be super helpful for uh, sporting events where you're not going to have as many crowds and you may not have any crowds for the, the next time being. So um, those are my takes on uh, what life looks like when we reopen. And I'd love to hear from you. Did I miss something? Do you have a really hot take that you want to say? Uh, DM me, message me, send me a, a, a chat. I love to hear your hot takes because we're going to open up soon and it's going to look crazy. And we want to make sure that we're prepared for what life is like. So that is this episode of the Business Life and Coffee Show. I hope that you gain something from it, uh, whether it's the all in challenge, what McDonald's is doing, what it's going to look like adjusting back to work. And I thank you for being a part of this episode. And I look forward to speaking with you and connecting with you again next week. See you later. Thank you.